Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is the third hour for Breakfast Extra here, and yes, we have another big story for you. Now, in recent developments, the police spokesperson in Lagos State SP, Benjamin Hundei, announced that a blogger, only identified as Stanley, will be prosecuted for allegedly defaming a businessman, Emeka Okonkwo, widely known as E-Money, in his online video. Mr. Hundei made this disclosure made his disclosure on Monday while parading the suspect before journalists at the command's headquarters in Ikeja. Now, according to Mr. Hundei, the command received a petition from eMoney about the offensive video, prompting a crack squad of the command to swing into action for investigation. They subsequently arrested the 24-year-old suspect at Urumi in Edo State. And now the police spokesman, uh, spokesperson emphasized that the persecution is not due to the personality involved, but because the suspect allegedly committed a crime. Mr. O'Day further went on to highlight the importance of following proper legal channels for defamation cases. Now, furthermore, he warned social media users against posting content that could be injurious to others. He stressed that action may be taken against them if their content is found offensive by anyone. Now, this serves as a crucial reminder for all social media users to be mindful of the content they share online. With the rise of digital platforms, the need for responsible communication has never been more critical as legal repercussions can follow false and defamatory statements. This case underscores the significance of understanding the legal implication of one's actions in the digital age, as social media continues to influence public opinion and personal reputations. Adhering to ethical standards and legal requirements is essential to avoid serious consequences. And now to discuss this more on the matter and to take a look at journalism in the age of digital media, its advantages and of course much more we are joined by editor-in-chief and that is uh, uh, editor-in-chief pulse nigeria samson toromade as well as imano onele a legal expert gentlemen Guys? you're welcome thank you for having uh, me thanks for coming on uh imano let's start with you right uh, when you look at, at our intro many of the things we, we talk there was legal implications, legal, almost, almost like a buzzword, yes. right? So with the record case of, you know, the blogger, you know, accused, or rather the incident, the recent case of the blogger accused of defaming uh, e-money, what legal frameworks are currently in place, you know, when it comes to addressing defamation? And does the police have to get involved, Is it, you know, arresting, swooping in and catching this person and just taking them to, to prison or holding them? Um, as I have uh, rightly pointed out, um, the question is very clear. Does the police have to be involved in defamation cases? Defamation cases could be civil and criminal. Um, civil in the sense that people could, it's a tortious um, action. People could go to court, file a civil action against you for defaming them. And then also in the criminal code, section 2, 373, 374, 375 actually criminalizes, you know, um, spreading information or spreading something about somebody which um, uh, as the case may be, destroys the person's reputation or causes damage to the person's reputation. So it is criminalized in the criminal code, and that is why the police can come in. Also, even in the, um, the repealed Cybercrime Act, there are places where you cannot you know, um, slander someone or make statements that, would, that someone finds injurious or insulting. Although the act has been repealed, the, that particular section has been repealed from the law. It's no more in, in use now. And they can come in and Mm. Um, yes. I want to go to the journalism angle, <clears throat> and that's Samson here, editor-in-chief of Paul, so you're not new to online uh, digital uh, mode of, uh, of uh, journalism. Mm. But with that, with the introduction of digital uh, um, online space and all, how does that affect traditional journalism in any way, shape, or form? Um, I think I should just start by saying that journalists are not perfect people. Right, and so I think that's why traditional media, for example, they are like systems to check to make sure that everything they are, you are putting out is accurate and that you have done everything you need to do to ensure that the information you are putting out is what it should be. I think with the advent of like uh, digital media now, mm -hmm. uh, they, that those systems don't exist because the information is more democratized and a lot more people are getting into this space without the sense of responsibility for putting systems in place. And in that way, you also get to see that the way people are now consuming media in general kind of tilts towards that like 
digital side where everything is more instant, everything is more sensational. Digest. And yeah, and I think that's also affecting digital media, um, like traditional media, because yeah. they see what's performing with the audience and they want to get on that side of things too. And so it's a very twisted situation currently because you also now see like very traditional media, very old media guys now who are kind of also doing the same thing mm -hmm. that media, like new media are doing in the sense that the systems are not working in the ways that they should. The systems are all geared towards clickbait. Yes. The more sensational, the I more want numbers. Which is what numbers. more people are reacting to. So it's, you know what, if this is what people want, let's give them what they want. It's, it's like I said, it's a two-step situation. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of something about Tuesday situation, we have a package just for you about to roll that clip. Take a look and, and just see what we have. To, and then afterwards, we'll come back and continue our conversation here in the studio. Take a look. Out of trying to grow my page, I wasn't having any other bad intention to spoil uh, Imoni's name. I was just making that video. I didn't even think the video would go to that extent. I, I know the video was very wrong for me to make such a video, but I didn't know the video was going to escalate to that extent. So, I mean, everything in that video was not true. I've been praying to maybe to get this opportunity to say, um, I'm very sorry to Sir Imoni. I didn't mean to tarnish his image. I didn't mean to spoil his name online. Oh, definitely, he's going to be prosecuted um, because the things he engaged in are criminal in nature and they have um, legal implications. So. He's going to be prosecuted. He has defamed. Um, that's that's an offence. He has also published false news about um, the complainant. All right. Now there, you just saw it there. The accused uh, of uh, uh, defamation and mm -hmm. you know criminal offences. He was there, you know, saying that his intentions were not to be, uh, to abuse e-money, but better yet, it was just because of his video. He wanted to go, he didn't think he would go viral, he just wanted more clicks. And on the other side, uh, we saw the PRO there, uh, SP Benjamin uh, Houdain, they're saying that what he's done or what he said is criminal in nature. Is so he... let's come to you now, uh, Emmanuel, again. He said criminal. What exactly makes this situation criminal for the accused here? Okay, so um, the, the law is very clear on what a crime is. When a crime is defined in the criminal code, it means the police can go in and prosecute such actions that are defined in the criminal code. There are some other um, laws that actually criminalizes some things. Um, one of those laws is the Cybercrime Act, which criminalizes a few other things. Um, Section 24 of the, uh, the amended act um, criminalizes you know, um, sharing or posting pornographic images of somebody on social media and whatnot. So since it is defined in the criminal code, the police would ordinarily swoop in. And, and then we, defamation, like I pointed out before, was um, section 373, 374, 375. Um, it is backed by law, as a case may be. So they can swoop on, actually. So and that's defamation when it comes to cyber cases. But what about defamation as in regular, maybe, uh, regular in, uh, interactions between people, is that also criminal as well? If I said something about somebody that wasn't true and he, he goes to the police, would I be arrested? Could I be arrested? Or is it just the function of it being digital that makes it uh, a criminal? criminal? Okay, um, Section 373 defines what defamation is. And as we are aware, everybody is aware, libel, um, slander, those are the two. So it is, if that particular thing is published in a medium, usually permanent medium, oh. Or if so, such thing is, um, it could be um, written, it could be um, video, it could be audio. Recorded it in any way. It could be recorded, so provided it is published in a medium. That's what the, the law provides. The Cybercrime Act actually provides that if it is recorded in a digital medium, that's what the Cybercrime Act provides. So that's why they, you can criminalize those things. So those things are you know, criminal in nature. The, the thing is, um, the, um, part, um, regarding this particular incident, um, the law, old law, the old Cybercrime Act, which is the 2015 on, there's a, a new amendment in 2024, mm -hmm. which was assented to by the president in 28th of February of this year. So in the new law, the, the, section, the section that actually criminalizes this thing, which is the section, section 24, um, subsection 1, um, it says that if all these things are produced, in those, if those, those, these things are put in those digital medium, and then the, this, but these things that you say or do, you know, insults, 
is it's um, it has ill will, all of these things against another person. It has been amended to say that oh no, it, no, it shouldn't be just insult because anybody can you can say something against somebody and then the person comes up and say oh this is insulting to me. Mm -hmm. um, you can't define insult in the real sense of it. Um, if we're looking at it, because anybody can, an opinion could be an insult to somebody, mm -hmm. and you can't criminalize an opinion. Depends on reception. I take that, it as an insult. Exactly. So what the law now comes to say is, is to say that okay, you know what? If this thing causes a breakdown of law and order, then this thing should be a, a defamatory element. Mm -hmm. If this thing causes breakdown of law and order, if this thing is pornographic in nature, or if this thing, um, uh, should I say, impugning into someone's reputation, mm -hmm. then that's when you say okay, yes. So uh, me, if it, me that is coming to report would have to come and say, okay, you know what, this thing actually imputes into my reputation, and these are the, these are the, these are examples of what had happened on my reputation that this thing had imputed into. What it's cost um, me. Yeah, to those elements. Now, um, Samson, uh, this isn't the first case that we've seen of uh, of bloggers, you know, who are on social media who just take up a, a camera and as far as a point and shoot, they just reel off for clicks and for bait. Another that we've seen very recently in the news was some gentleman who picks up a phone and they starts to accuse um, the very popular evangelist, uh, a song evangelist. Which one? Um, yes. I think that was Messi Chiwin in the mix. Yes, Messi Chiwin oh, yeah. was in the mix, who was accusing the man and telling her that uh, the paternity is very oh. questionable because of how the son looked. It was very... Very bold thing to do, and also very, very vile as well. And so, which takes me to my question about ethics, right? As far as ethics and integrity in journalism is concerned, how can bloggers, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to put journalists in the side, but you know, but bloggers, because you are, you are, very, you basically watch, walk in the digital space. How can they, you know, maintain the balance between speed, wanting to jump on the story and, you know, clickbait and clout? but also integrity and, you know, accuracy as well. So, like, I, I think I'll go back to, like, the systems thing that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. right? So, like, I work for an organization that has, like, a physical address, and so I understand that actions have consequences. And so whatever I do for, like, my organization, I'm trying to make sure that they are not doing anything that brings, like, very severe consequences. And so I have, like, that system in place. I have, that, like, that sense of responsibility in mm -hmm. place which is why I think bloggers maybe don't have. So like in my newsroom, for example, we have like a multi-layer system where what someone is doing on like one level has to be like um, checked by like someone else on another level. And sometimes I have to come in and say, yo, what's going on here? I mean, we've had like a couple of recent examples where something breaks in the news, for example, and you know, there's that itch to also like just because speed, you know, the time to market is very important, but then it's no, guys. We have to actually be sure that what's good. and like on both those occasions, for example, that we implemented those things, we realized that we did not need to like publish those things because they were untrue. Now, in a blogging space, for example, basically no one can be a blogger. Some of some of these things are like one-man operations, for example, mm -hmm. and so if you don't have the sense of responsibility to be sure to say. I want to make sure that everything I put out is accurate, then I don't know you always run like this, this kind of problems. And also like just like w another side of it is some of these operations again are also set up to be like clickbaity. They want the attention and so they don't care about the consequences exactly. as well as spreading it's not even actually the consequences. I don't think they think about it in the sense of like consequences will come. They think about what they are getting from it. So it's the likes, is the is the retweets or like whatever for them. And so they don't maybe, I think, don't think far along the line of what if this gets the wrong attention and someone is aggrieved enough to chase it down. So I think maybe that thinking doesn't happen enough and maybe that's what they should think about. One, the sense of responsibility. I have to make sure that I'm actually informing people and not trying to enrich them, not trying to trigger them with you know, whatever it is that comes into the space. Well, you make a fair point there. One question for both guys, um, the editor and the legal practitioner here. If I have access to a mass of people, if I have access to a cult, and I'm using that word use, uh, loosely. Loosely. Do I have more responsibility than she does for maybe her just one hundred followers that she has to, like that one. To, <laughs> to make sure that I don't trigger, like you say, these groups of people? If she commits something much like if I committed anything, and this is for you, would I be held more accountable than she would? If I had a million people and I say, uh, 
go damage that man's car. And she has 100 followers, and she says, go damage that man, man's car. Who's more liable here? What do you think? I don't know. Uh, okay, so um, from, my, from my standpoint, the, the law is clear. The law is one is universal, and it's, the rule of law is applicable in this country, as I the last time I checked. Everybody is equal before the eyes of the law. You don't take, one person don't bear responsibility other than the other person. Although the thing is, uh, it is the court that, it, it, is, it is on the discretion of the courts to actually give judgment pertaining pertain to some things that the judge per, per, perceives. So an example is this, if the judge perceives that, okay, you have a, a moral responsibility or a higher responsibility to take care of something, the judgment the judge may met out towards you may be different or may be severe okay. compared to some other person. So, but the law is, the, is yeah. one universal. So, Samson, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I think I'm kind of aligned in the sense of, again, you still have the responsibility. If you are putting information out, people are going to consume it, right? And like the, the way the um, social media works, for example, you can think, yeah, I have like 100 followers, but like you just need like one prominent person to like retweet, for example, and then the 100 followers that you have, you are putting that information in front of like, 50,000 people, for example. So I think every single person has like that responsibility. When you're putting out information on like social media, especially in the way that it affects someone else, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that it's accurate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen, many thanks for coming on and just giving us insights. We appreciate you so much. We appreciate you for doing this. Uh, and that was Samson Toromade. He is the editor-in-chief, Pulse Nigeria, as well as Imano Enele, who is a legal expert. And they joined us today to talk about cyberbullying, and the consequences, or rather, cyber crimes and defamation, libel, and everything in between, and also everything, everything yes. in between as well. But thank you so much, gentlemen. I appreciate thank you. you. Again. Thank you for having me.